This is Gat. I'm with Passion TV. You know, Gak, man, or is that how you pronounce it? Tell the yeah. people who you are. And, you yeah, know. it's Gak. Yeah, like Mackle with a G, uh, right. G-A-K. Oh. A is an ad sign. But uh, yeah, that was my uh, my first words, like kind of uh, growing up when I was just for, uh, first starting to talk. Uh, uh, my moms would like call my dad and just be like trying to get me to say something on the phone. And then that was just my first sound, like my first actual kind of word, I guess, that I w would say. And he just started calling me that. And then all my friends would just start calling me that too. So I was just like, I want to go with a personal nickname. Like all my homies call me because I feel like my music's real personal and I want to, you know, always come from the heart. So that's why I wanted to go with that name. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how would you describe your music? Uh, I would describe my music as definitely uh, hip hop rooted, uh, West Coast. Uh, I'm originally from SAC and uh, I would say West Coast influence heavy. Definitely some uh, funk uh, influence, rock influence, mm -hmm. and uh, soul. I feel like soul and funk is like just right up there next to hip hop, like for my favorite genres. So I definitely like mixing all those genres. So where do you get that from? Where do you get that soul stuff from, man? Uh, my mom's side, definitely my mom and my, uh, my Nana when she was uh, alive, both of them definitely got me on the jazz and the funk uh, heavily. They were, yeah, they were always about that. And then my dad was was always on the rock, and uh, yeah, he just kind of always was jamming different stuff, like uh, psychedelic rock, and you know, just type of you know different types of rock with melody in it. And so I just feel like my style has always been kind of eclectic and what my taste is and what I like, you know. From both, they just merged. Yeah, bro. Like I mean, I've I just feel like I've always liked to listen to a lot of different stuff. So mm -hmm. I just feel like naturally, just kind of all my influences just kind of come out mm -hmm. when I start creating. I just like I never like to really do the same thing like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So coming from Cali, well, not necessarily Cali, Sacktown, Sacramento. Yeah, yeah to texas how did you what was that transition like because man i was uh i was 10 whenever i moved and i i did not like it you know i'm not gonna lie like it was definitely a culture shock you know halfway across the country uh just you know different and i, I wasn't trying to leave where i was at i liked where i was at and uh so coming down here was just a completely different environment but i definitely made friends uh you know i was, I was glad grateful i came you know and when i was still young enough to where i can make friends and grow up with them here mm -hmm. so it was cool it's definitely cool down here but it's just different uh, out there yeah, yeah different different just you know like the culture just like i just feel like the way people kind of move and live is just different, you know? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows about Cali, but like tell everybody about Sacramento. Like, is it like where people are tripping on colors, they're tripping on cats, like? Mm-mm, bro, I didn't have like? to deal with none of that. Well, I'm not gonna say none of that, but like where I lived, like definitely the element or the middle school I was gonna go to, I was gonna have to wear uniforms there. Mm -hmm. High school, I was gonna have to wear uniforms there. So there was like, definitely like a little bit, but not that I experienced, I might've been too young, but like, I just feel like everybody was kind of cool with everybody. I had white friends, Mexican friends, black friends, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was just like, I, in my eyes, I felt like I didn't really experience racism like that when I was out there. Yeah, I, I didn't even say that, bro. I just meant like, what is that? You know, y'all got a different slang. And when you come oh, out yeah. here, oh, yeah, yeah. you 10, you know, you're using different slang. Was you putting people on out here? Uh. I don't, I don't want to say I was. I just want to say, like, definitely, like, different. Everybody would just say, you don't sound like you from here. Like, they, they would just always ask, where are you from? And then I would just be like, uh, Sacramento. And they'd just be like, yeah, you just don't sound like you from here. And then mm -hmm. somebody, uh, I, I remember they said, like, uh, you sound like hip hop proper or something like that. It's like the way, like, you know, like, Sac, I think it's Sac, uh, Sacramento cats. Yeah, yeah. Sac I mean, uh, Sacramento cats, man, they seem like y'all say every syllable. Out uh, here, we a little child like Atlanta and us are kind of mm -hmm. like cousins. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So whenever you, I, I really want to know your recording process. Like, mm -hmm. do you need any essentials before you record? Man, that's a good question. I don't want to say I need any essentials. Definitely some water for mm -hmm. sure. For sure, for sure some water. Um, my mouth be getting dry. <laughs> I do like a little bit of weed sometimes. Mm -hmm. Not all the time. It depends on the strand because I might get a little, little sleepy. Mm -hmm. A little like it just depends on the energy too of the song. Um, but definitely just water. Um, uh, I like um, my process is kind of scattered, so I, I like to kind of just record. You know, in the moment when I'm feeling it, uh, I'll record at the crib. So mm -hmm. it's just. Uh, 
you know, I like to just, you know, just really just in the moment, if I'm in the living room, you know, messing with, uh, you know, a beat or something like that, freestyling, just Wait, talking my shit. You make your own beats? Uh, I start, that's a new, some new things I'm on, but uh, oh. I, I wouldn't say like I'm cold like that, but yeah, I, I do make some beats, but yeah. Um, but usually I just be on, uh, you know, whatever playlist I have, if it's a producer that sent me some or a YouTube producer, mm -hmm. I might just, it didn't matter. I'll just be going off a playlist I got and just freestyling most of the time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just like to, you know, kind of scat, I guess you could say, and um, just be like mumbling and, you know, just I'll be having my freestyle sessions and just go like that and then be like, okay, I got a melody or I got like a, you know, a cadence or something that I like and then mm -hmm. start filling that in and then uh, really just go from like the voice recordings to the uh, to the mic and then just start, you know, kind of kind of going off of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I seen you're a big uh, performer, you know, what like what is the performing experience for you? You have more have like a, a, a live crowd or everybody's more chill. I would say more chill, definitely uh, more listening and just like wanting to hear the words. Um, I definitely want to get to the point where I get the mosh pits too, you know, for sure. But uh, I definitely, uh, I like uh, I like that people listen to the words, but um, I definitely want to have that mix of both. But I, I would say right now it's more like a little bit of, of funking and grooving at times, but more just like bobbing the head, moving and uh, listening. How do you feel about the mosh pit culture now? Cause like, remember that Travis Scott incident happened? Yeah, and, man. But, but they know it's just been no cameras. It's been happening. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. do you feel about them putting so much heat on mosh pit, man? I don't think it's right, man. I think he was just kind of a scapegoat. And I, I don't really know the situation. Like obviously people die, bro. So like that is serious. And you know, I definitely feel for those, those families mm -hmm. of those people. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I just don't know what happened in that situation. So I can't really, comment on that, but as far as mosh pits go, bro, I've been in some of the funnest, you know, I feel like that's been some of the funnest times going to festivals and being in mosh pits, like. You gotta, you gotta explain mosh pits because a lot of people go to clubs and stand around. Uh huh. What, what I kind of know about the, the experience from watching DVDs and all that back in the day. Mm -hmm. And went to a few Travis Scott, you know, Young Thug concerts. What is that mosh pit like? What is the experience like? Hey, the Jid mosh pit, I'm going to say I went to the Day in Las Vegas Festival and uh, the Jid mosh pit was crazy. Mm -hmm. But it was like, I just feel like it's it's definitely for the Ragers. Like, I definitely, I'm a big Cuddy fan, Cuddy influence. And uh, I feel like he, like, kind of brought the rage and Travis Scott definitely, uh, you know, is influenced off of that. Mm -hmm. And Jid, too, I feel like he just got a you know, that, that energy, just kind of that wild youth energy that, mm -hmm. you know, you just want to let it out. And I feel like that's like a safe space to let it out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it because people ain't really trying to hurt nobody. They just yeah. really, you know, like- Getting it's, live. Yeah, it's just getting getting live, you know, like Lil John back in the day, you know? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Lil Jack used to have everybody fight for no reason, man. Mm -hmm. But people don't know about that era, you know, where right. they used to just fight. Right. What have, what have you been to any clubs back in the day, and that was like a thing you'll do and then go home? No, nah, that wasn't. Uh, that wasn't the wave I was on. It was yeah. more just like dancing and uh, just kind of like you know maybe jumping a little bit, pushing. But like yeah. I was young back then, so I wasn't really going to like, you know, yo, no big clubs or anything okay. like that. It was like teenage clubs and shit. Okay. Yeah. How old are you now? Man? Uh, man, I'm 28. Golly. Yeah. It, I don't, you like one, you just one year apart. Yeah. You know I mean, I'm 27. Yeah, you yeah. Know I mean, how does it feel to be, you know, uh, you know, a black man in this society, figuring out yourself and branding yourself? Mm -hmm. Like you're a brand, you mm -hmm. know? How does that feel? Man, I feel like it's something I've gotten more serious with over the past two years or so, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, uh, I don't think I was as serious about it when I was younger in my early twenties. I think I was just kind of just wanting to make music and do whatever. And now I feel like I'm more serious about like you know understanding that I am a brand and how I got to represent myself. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever I step anywhere, mm -hmm. and so I feel like it's made me not want to be as accessible and also just not be doing a lot of the same wild shit I was doing when I was younger. Man, I see you wild, you know what I mean? I yeah. see you with the motorcycles, man. Yeah. Explain to the people what it's like riding one of those, cause I want one, but mm -hmm. it's like, I only I only drove like the mini motorcycles mm -hmm. used to have back in the day. Man, I would say uh, if you scared, don't get on one. Yeah. But if you if you do have a desire, like take the class. That's what I just took a weekend class, mm -hmm. got my license and it, it was real quick, but I didn't get up on the road like that. Like. 
Oh. The reason why I started riding was because my whole family rides and I was like the last one and I'm real rebellious. So I was just kind of like, man, I don't know if I need to be on that. Uh, but, you know, after a while, I was just like, man, let me go ahead and give it a try. Yeah. And uh, I, I enjoyed it, bro. It really is like, a, you know, kind of just in your own world, just like riding a, a regular uh, bicycle. But, you know, you obviously can go faster and you can just I love how you can kind of leave everybody on the road and just be in your own zone mm -hmm. and just having the, you know, the music playing. But it's cool. But also, uh, it's we, we wanted to start like a, a business as well. I really wanted to get into the bike. So uh, mm -hmm. we started doing like a rental business on the side and uh, just um, renting out the bikes and uh, doing like car rentals on the side, too. Wait, I never heard of that. People can rent out bikes? Yeah, bro. Yeah, they got platforms now where you can rent mm -hmm. uh, rent out bikes just like Turo, like for the cars. Damn. Yeah. I, I, it trusts people that much? Dude. Hey, hey, you got the yeah. insurance. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's for. <laughs> shit. <laughs> You always got to have a backup plan. Though. Right, That's right. tight. I yeah. might have to do that, man, because I just want a weekend where I drive it, but it's going to be down the street and back. Hey, you bro, you can't come hit me up, bro. Yeah, for yeah. real, if you want to just rent it for an hour, you can, or a for couple sure. hours, yeah, let me know. For sure. But yeah, you got to have a license or something, I think, to get yeah. on the platform. I'm going to go to the yeah. class, bro. I would yeah. do you like that. That's yeah, what I'm yeah, trying yeah. to. You'll be like, just because we had an interview, oh, nah, bro, you yeah. got to get the class. Yeah. I would want it. You know what Yeah, I mean? no, that's, that's real. No, yeah. it's really fun, though, bro. Like, for real, like, I, I enjoy riding. It's um, it's cool, and uh, I just like that it's something that uh, you know can be a side a side thing, like mm -hmm. to make some more income and do with the fam. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I do any tricks like pop the wheelies. Man, I don't, be, I don't be doing all that. I do I do see how you can like do it, but I'm I'm not really trying to get into yeah. all that. Yeah. Like, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't do the whole wheelie thing either because it's really like Dallas Rose. It's too bad, bro. It's you got to be on the defensive out here yeah. already. You know, yeah. yeah, got to. Yeah, how you know how. How is your whole experience out here, you know, with the rap game? Do you feel, what, what's your hardest parts of this? Uh, I would say the hardest parts, maybe just, um, I don't know. I would say maybe just finding like the, the right, community i guess mm -hmm. like you know because I, I feel like we got people here and there you know that that vibe with the music but um you know i guess just finding that uh more of that crowd and getting more opportunities to mm -hmm. um to perform along uh, uh artists that kind of have a similar sound mm -hmm. i guess it's hard to find uh more artists that are wanting to i guess just make uh I guess more genreless music, yeah. but just yeah, more uh, music just kind of open it up to different genres. And uh, yeah, I, I feel like there's people that make different stuff in the city, but I just feel like, man, I just need to really just put out some more more stuff. I got mm -hmm. stuff in the works and uh, really, I think it's just when I start putting more, more of my content out, I'll mm -hmm. start getting more opportunities and more looks. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just- How, how you yeah. know, who do you feel like working with in the future? Uh, from the city, yeah, man. I think I uh, what's it called? I think Coach Tev's real dope. I yeah. seen uh, I seen some of his stuff. Um, I think Maya Piata's real dope. Uh, I actually performed uh, a show with her a couple years ago. I think she's real dope. Um, I think Help um, is real dope. I know he's out in L.A. now, but uh, I know he's uh, you know he's from the city. I think he's dope. And uh, Kush with a C, I'd like to work with him too. Kush with a C. Yeah, you heard of him? Nah, you gotta put me on. Yeah, he's dope too. Uh, my homie uh, Mo, he shoot, he shoots videos too uh, from Essential Aesthetics. He uh, had showed me him, and he's dope. Okay. Yeah, and um, and No ID too. I don't know if you heard of him, but he's dope too. It sounds like he's from New York, Honda. Yeah, it does. He's I think he's from uh, Louisiana or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I didn't seen him uh, perform at a show, and I thought he was dope. Uh, he he definitely had that like Southern lyrical style. And, Big uh, crit, kinda. Uh, I would say more like outcast kind of a little bit, yeah. Okay. Yeah, more like AT Alien type of sound. Who are your dream people to work with though? Cause you can't drop outcast like that. I gotta know your top five. Uh, my top five? Yeah. Man, so my top five to work with? Just dream people to work with, dead or alive, bro. Dead or alive, dream yeah. people to work with. Uh, I would say, shit, that's tough, bro. That's real <laughs> tough. That's like, 
Because from where are you from, I'm kind of kind of trying to figure out like how you merged like LA and Texas. So I really want to know. That's, that's well, bro, I really is. like love New York, like mm-hmm. uh, too. Like I really love the the rappers from New York. Like Jay Z um, is like one of my biggest influences, and Biggie, and um, I really like a lot of New York stuff mm-hmm. too. So I just really just like hip hop too. But I, I would say, man, I would say Kanye. I like to work with Kanye, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I would really like to work with... Mm, Kanye wanna go in there and make you go in that booth 15, 30 times though. But that's how I already work, bro. So yeah. I, I'm like, I'll tell him to go in there too, shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be like, shit, I'll go back in there, but you need to go fix this yeah. too. So, so but, uh, but yeah, no, I, I, would, uh, I would love to work with Ye. And uh, I would say, mm, I, I like to work with like the people that can produce and rap too. So definitely Cole mm-hmm. and Cole is a big influence. Mm-hmm. And um, what's that I, song he put out where it sounds like he in the rain and all this, and he's just building up. Well, he sounds like he in the rain. He it, it sounds like it just got thunder. It got thunder sounds in the back, and then it's just he on there going so crazy. Uh, he just released it. Uh, who the fuck are you talking with? about? Um, oh, with the butcher, Vinny the uh, butcher. Oh yeah, uh, Johnny yeah. P's caddy. Yeah, man. Hey, nasty. That on the night I was born, the rain was pouring. Yeah, I was, crying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just yeah. like, are they competing? Hey, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you are competing. Oh, you always competing in, in hip hop. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But like, I think it was a respectful, you know, competition. But yeah. Do you feel like when you get on a feature with somebody, y'all kind of like, what is that like? I just feel like it's, it's healthy competition, yeah. definitely. Like, you definitely uh, don't want them to outdo you, mm-hmm. you know? No, I don't think anybody wants to get outdid, especially in hip hop. Mm-hmm. But uh, I do think there's a, you gotta find that common ground and make sure that you're doing the best thing for the song, too. Man, Drake, he'll try to get on everybody's song, but he'll catapult them, but it's like, bro, don't try to embarrass me, you know what I mean? Hey, I don't I don't know, man. It's just like, that's, that's the nature of the game, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You gotta come ready to eat, especially yeah. if you know somebody's like, at the top or they they're making their way up there yeah. you got to come ready mm-hmm. so talking about you know everybody you want in the past your upbringing you know where do you see yourself five years from now bro five years from now yeah i see myself definitely touring mm-hmm. touring the country um doing the own own label thing but i definitely wouldn't mind sign into a bigger label but i definitely want to have my own my own thing and be able to produce for people be able to write for people and just be able to uh, to to not to pivot and not only be able to have to tour all the time or have to tour every year but uh but be able to release the album you know every couple years and tour um every you know every time i drop but uh but also be able to do other things, be able to, to write, whether it's writing a book, writing whatever mm-hmm. on the side and just being able to expand um, that way. But but still, you know, main thing being the music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you write a book, that's gonna be here forever. A lot of people don't know that. Hey, the music is too, yeah. but I just love writing, bro. You know, and I love reading too. So like, I just, I definitely see myself uh, expanding the writing uh, palette, you know, mm-hmm. like that. Do you actually write your wrongs? Yeah. Oh, well, you talking about like on paper? Yeah. Um, no, I, I like doing brainstorming on paper, but I like uh, writing in the phone. Ah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's still what I was saying, bro. Like, save all of that. Mm-hmm. You might could put it as an NFT, you know what I mean? Like, hey, you right. Or scratch the NFT, just have it as artifacts, you know what I mean? Hey, no, you. it's going to the NFTs, though. That's, that's a good idea. I never even mm-hmm. thought about that. Mm-hmm. You know, that's... Uh, yeah, that's, that's gonna change the game. Mm-hmm. It better, you yeah. know what I mean? Cause yeah. if Snoop Dogg got his whole catalog on there, I got nothing to jam. Yeah, you know hey, that's, hey, that was a smart move, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I love that he did that. He's, yeah. he, I feel like he's really thinking uh, ahead and trying to, you know, trying to change the game. Mm-hmm. And especially for the West, cause I feel like, you know, somebody's gotta, you know, step up and do it for the West. Mm-hmm. I like that. He's by far the most famous West Coast, well, arguably, rapper. I think so. You think yeah, that? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Who, who else? Shit, other than I feel like him or Pot. Yeah, DMX at one point. But he ain't from the West though. Nah, yeah, you're right. DMX yeah. from the East. Yeah. But when you saw DMX, it was just random dogs popping up everywhere. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Just, hey. it just, those are the times in Def Jam fight for New York. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. All the games, it's just like he was everywhere. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you could just be, when you have your own brand, would you pitch yourself on commercials, cartoons? Yeah. Would yeah. you accept those deals? Yeah, bro. I like because um, I'm. I mean, I'm. Uh, I'm planning to you know work in the film industry too. I'm actually working on a short film that we're gonna be releasing with this EP I got, mm -hmm. and so um, I'm actually uh, executive producing for that. And uh, that was my first time actually working on set. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, shoot, I, I can see myself, uh, you know, continuing to, you know, not maybe not all the time, but, you know, do some things here and there. Mm -hmm. I'd uh, prefer to like maybe do something on a show, uh, like a TV show or something like that rather than a commercial. But but yeah, I, I can see myself uh, being in in that world. Yeah, yeah. I can see it. Cause wait, wait a minute. You're a jack of all trades, you rap, you know, entertainer. You know, and then on top of that, you make your own beats. You know, what gives you that hustle? Who who gave you that hustle? Uh, both my parents, bro. They they both are hustlers. Yeah, they always are working. But my mom uh, definitely, you know, uh, pushed me like in sports. You know, to when like whenever I play sports, to just always be. You know, I always just wanted to be the best. And whenever I play sports, but she always was just like, you know, you gonna have to work. You know, if you really want to, because there's always somebody better, you know, mm -hmm. and so, uh, you know, they did uh, teach me to, you know, stay humble, but, you know, always, you know, grind and get it. And if you, you ain't going to get nothing on, uh, hand it to you. So you got to get it, you know, how you get it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. what, what sport did you play? I played baseball, basketball, and football. God damn, Bo Jackson. <laughs> cold at all of them? I was, I won't say I was cold at all of them. I would say like, I was cold at baseball uh, for a while. And then I, I feel like I wasn't, I was just okay when I got older because I didn't have that love like that. Mm. But I would say like, I definitely had gotten cold at basketball. I feel like that's the one I, I worked the hardest at. And then uh, football, I was, I was cold too, but I just didn't play like long enough. I feel like to, really like get my potential out for football. Wait, but running back? No, nah, I played receiver. Ah, I should have played safety though. I feel like I would have been the coldest at safety. No, nah, bro, because you good, your brain intact, bro. You know what I mean? No, you are right. Because the right. boys, was, they, they didn't do the, the head rule back then. Mm -hmm. They just started to where you can, where you can't hit with the crown of your helmet. Right. Back then it was helmet to helmet and that was just a hit stick. Right. You know what I mean? No, that's true. That's true. And you know all that, uh, what is it, that CTE and all that stuff, bro? Like it, It's real. Yeah, it is. It's it real. is. And I, and I mean, I did get a couple injuries in, in high school. That was one of the reasons why I was like, yeah, I think I need to go ahead and just uh, hang it up. Uh, uh, like yeah. concussions? What? No, I had a couple knee surgeries, a couple knee injuries. Yeah, I'm both one on each knee. Damn. Yeah. What, torn ACL? Uh, meniscus. Wow. Yeah. And that process is like kind of like where you got to always have the cast or like what is that process like? Uh, no, I ain't, ain't got to always have the cast, but I did have like, you know, a rehab period, you know, a time. And, you know, I just feel like uh, it's, you, you know, you still come back and you can play strong, but you just ain't really like the same, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's ne you never 100 percent like you were before. And uh, I just feel like my body then went through, you know, a lot. And after that last that last season, mm. I was just like, man, I think it's it's that time to, you know, go ahead and do something else. Mm. Yeah. A lot of people don't know when to stop. Yeah. It's good that you walking around, you healthy now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Speaking yeah. of that, that that time in your life, like, what was the 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 craziest experience you've ever had just in life, and you got you had to get yourself out of it? Man. Oh uh, shh. I had a few, bro. I had a few, uh, you know, I, I feel like a uh, couple, couple accidents, uh, you know, a couple like near death experiences. Um, some, some don't want to go into too much detail on this. Yeah, don't you know go, I mean? don't you know do saying? that. Yeah, but I'm but, saying, uh, you got to pick yeah. one to where it's like, yeah. shoot, you might have had broke something and ran all the way to the hospital or what, you know, and you can leave out whoever's name and call them John and mm. Doe, you know? Yeah. Uh, man, I, I would say, bro, some of my stories, they too crazy for the cam. Yeah. Bro. I'm, I'm not going to lie, bro. <laughs> you know? no. Yeah. Well, well, have you ever felt like God talked to you and then he was just really like, I got you. And you, you just feel like you're good now. Mm -hmm. what, is yeah. it, what was it like overcoming that feeling? Did you change your, your, mm -hmm. your, your ways? Or? Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, I think that uh, I definitely have been humble, you know, uh, definitely been humbled, but also shown, you know, that I'm favored mm -hmm. um, as well. Um, but uh, I definitely, uh, you know, the process was just, you know, humbling, bro. I know what it feels like to, you know, not be able to walk, you know, for, uh, you know, some months and then, you know, have to learn how to walk again, you know, and, uh, the, you know, from having like a couple like broken uh, spinal, you know, injuries and, you know, broken ankles. So like learn how to walk again after that. And then like, uh, what was that process like, man, like walking on a, you know, like a walker, you know, for, a, for a little bit. And then like having to like only be able to put a percentage of like weight on and like having to, you know, just do like kind of physical therapy like that. Mm. And so, uh, you know, that process is just like showed me that, you know, I needed to slow down and, uh, and just, uh, really just slowing down, and uh, also just not, uh, I thought I was just getting ahead of myself and just always in a rush. And then, you know, like I said, I'm a hustler, always grinding, but I also had to learn to slow down and learn that, uh, you know, to appreciate where you at right now. Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like during that time, I was like, I had to deal with a lot of losing people or losing certain situations in my life. So it's just like, damn, if you don't appreciate what you got and you always focus on the next thing, mm -hmm. you can always lose it. So just, you know, I feel like that helped me nurture Mm -hmm. uh, the people and the things I got in my life now. Mm -hmm. It make you appreciate everything more. It can be the smallest thing. Yeah. Like, shoot, I, if I lost the pinky toe today, it's like, damn, I didn't know I needed it, <laughs> you know? Think about it. It's yeah, just like the way she looked at you. But no, that's no, that's facts though. That's that's really facts. I'm just laughing the way she looked at you. <laughs> she broke her neck. I'm just saying, you notice stuff like that, you know. And then yeah. what, what? I know we talked about the your life and you know breaking bones and mm -hmm. you know what? What are you? What, what are your projects you got coming up? Man, I got a few, bro. I got a few already recorded. It's just uh, the process of getting a mix right now and um, really just uh, figuring out how to get them out of the visuals too. I want to put out with them, but uh, I got two, uh, one EP, the one that's coming up with the short film, uh, No Running, that's dropping. We're looking to drop this summer. Uh, almost done with the short film, wrapping that up. Mm -hmm. And then I got another EP after that. And then I got something else after that too. So mm -hmm. I just, um, I, I, I've been working, bro. I've just been, uh, you know, trying to work on finishing up right mm -hmm. now. And uh, and also just getting out on these streets too and, uh, you know, making some noise there. Mm -hmm. Cause you gotta do the hand to hand. You gotta do, you know, the politicking and socializing. Yeah. A lot of people just think it's social media, man. Man, and I'm not gonna lie, bro. Social media is a real useful tool, but mm -hmm. I'm just not personally, I don't, like being on it like that um i do you know see where it could be helpful but i, I prefer like i always in, prefer in-person stuff me mm -hmm. personally you know mm -hmm. that's, that's how i am yeah. too because it's like if you're not walking through these crowds who do you who do you expect to meet for real you might be talking to a catfish right you know what I mean? for real for real <laughs> did y'all meet in person <laughs> yeah 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 you gotta meet yeah you know bro I mean? for real Just, <laughs> hey, I like that. That's 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 organic. That's real. <laughs> hey, I feel like I'm on Montel. We, we got to get it together. <laughs> so how are you doing today? You know what I mean? Montel used to sit like this and shit. Tell me about your catfish story, Jimmy. No, can't do that. I had to pull up on that motherfucker. I'm like, hey, but it was but it was freshman. It was what, what freshman year of college. I was talking. You got to talk to everybody through Twitter and all that. You, it happens, hey. but I didn't meet, I, I mean, it was a lot, it was a lot. Mm -hmm. But that's another story. <laughs> hey, I'm not judging, bro. Hey. It could happen to anybody, bro, you bro. know? Well, the thing was, I didn't even know him. That's the crazy thing. He didn't even, it was just like a random motherfucker. So did you ever try to meet up in person? And it, Yeah, I, it yeah. was just like one of those where you just text him and you chopping it up with him. And mm -hmm. then boom, it's like, all right, so when we going when I'm gonna see you? You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't duck it. You can't duck that fa that FaceTime no more. Hell no. Hey. But it happens to the best. I, I'm glad it happened while I was young though, because I wasn't really tripping. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Did you have a catfish story? Have you been catfish? No, thankfully I don't. <laughs> I don't have any. Uh, no, I don't. No. I, not that I can think of. Because you were in person. That's what yeah, I, I never really was on the online dating thing like yeah. that. Yeah. Like, that's, too, that's, too, that's too serious for me. It's Yeah, it's not. I've, I've shot my shot like on the DMs before, but like not like, 
Not like anything. That was me. Yeah. That was me. It, just, it fucks up. It fucks up everything. It fucks up everything. We just got to get back to real life. How do you feel about people trying to transfer our souls to the metaverse? Hey, that took a hard left. Hey, but that's real though. That's real. Um, sh I mean, that's a loaded question. I don't know. Um, I haven't really looked into that a whole whole lot, but I do. I do notice, like you know the them you know the kind of the push you know yeah. what i mean towards going towards more technology yeah. more uh you know i heard some about elon wanting to do something about like doing something that's a brain scanner or something like that Put the and, chips in there yeah the chips and i'm like hell no nah, bro none of that shit ever um, you know he failed it like the monkeys he put it in died had like an aneurysm boom died you know damn but he he he's trying to literally Whenever we go and, you know, go to glory, or whatever, he's trying to literally grab our conscience and have us just sit in a whole little situation, still communicating with people. I don't like that. You saw them Black Mirror episodes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to warn us. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, bro, like, I think there's going to be some people that are going to be for that shit. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's just that's just uh you know some people gonna have their choice but i do see like it kind of going towards that unfortunately like just more people wanting to connect with electronics and try to stay here forever mm. but some people like that idea you know of, of staying staying for forever i don't know no nah, bro <laughs> yeah uh, i'm trying to you know do this to the fullest capability right but if somebody that don't even know me controlling my every thought no nah, bro Hell can't no. do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So no. where 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 can the where where can the people find you? They can find me on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, uh all that call me gack, uh call me gack dot com. And yeah, those those are the main spots. Um got a new project coming soon. Uh you can look out for that. But yeah, call me gack on all platforms, call me gack dot com. Mm, okay. Yes sir. Man, we, we look forward to everything, man. And you know, any events coming up? That Man, um, not that I can talk about right now, um, but uh, I would just say, just look out for the EP and the short film. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's all I'll say uh, for now. Just look out for those two okay. uh, upcoming. And uh, yeah, I got some more. Okay, yeah, I yeah. appreciate you yeah. sitting down with us, man. Man, I appreciate you for having me, bro, both of y'all. That appreciate was a live interview, man. Yeah. It felt like we was kicking it for real. Hey, for real, <laughs> hey, for real, just chopping it up.